So welcome back to another rebuild here on NBA 2K24 Next Gen. In today's video, we are back with another episode of the off-season rebuilds, and today it's going to be the Memphis Grizzlies. To say it has not been a very fun season for the Memphis Grizzlies and all of their fans would be the understatement of the century. Obviously started off the season on a rough note with John Morant having a 25-game suspension. He came back, played I think 9 games, and then had a season-ending injury. Their new acquisition, Marcus Smarts, played about 20-25 games. They've dealt with injuries with Jaron Jackson Jr., Desmond Bain, and everybody in between. It has just not been a very fun season for a really good young up-and-coming team. A team that should be a playoff team literally in any other season. Season. So it has not very gone very well, but the really good news is that this season is almost over. They're going to have another high draft pick and the future is very, very bright here in Memphis. I'm super excited for today's video. Obviously, this one is a little bit different than some of the other offseason rebuilds I've done. The Grizzlies don't actually suck as a team. They just had really bad injury luck and suspension luck and everything like that. So um, our rebuild today, of course, our goal is to win a championship very excited about this one. It's not nearly going to be as challenging as some of the other ones, but I've been having a ton of fun with the offseason rebuild. It seems like you guys have been enjoying them as well. If there's any other teams you want me to do, let me know down below in the comments section. And just a friendly reminder, we are only doing teams that have been eliminated so far. Let's get into this one. All right, so as I mentioned in the intro a few times, this season has obviously been the season from hell for the Memphis Grizzlies. And uh, the real big difference here today versus other videos is that this team is actually good. There's talent on this roster, and I'm very much looking forward to rebuilding a team with a lot of talent. So John Morant injured, he will not be injured. But obviously, the face of this franchise, the best young player on this team, best player overall in general. And uh, he's going to be about a 93 overall. He's only 24. He's 100% a building block for us here today. I really hope Jock can stay healthy, stay on the court in the future, all that fun stuff, because he is a very, very exciting player to watch. Marcus Smart came over in a three-team trade with the Celtics this offseason. I am a Celtics fan, as many of you know. It absolutely was a punch right in the gut when the trade did happen, but I love Marcus. I'm always going to love Marcus. He's going to be a great, great piece for Memphis next season. Uh, Derek Rose is here. He's a good veteran presence. Probably not going to play a lot for us here today. We're going to figure out what we want to do with him. You got Scottie Pippen Jr., Jordan Goodwin on two-way contract. Shooting guard spot, Desmond Bain. I like Desmond Bain. Good shooting guard option, now on a long-term extension, only 26 years old. I fully believe that he's probably capable of being my everyday shooting guard for three years. In this video, Luke Kennard, good shooter off the bench. Those eyes are scaring the everlasting hell out of me. He's entering free agency, somebody I would like to retain. Don't want to let him go for nothing. Got John Conchar down here as well. Probably not going to see a ton of minutes today. Could be a trade piece. We'll see. Small forward spot. It's an interesting one for me because it's maybe the one position on this team where you're like, ah, I don't know if there's a championship caliber starter there. Nothing to take away anything from Vince Williams Jr. If he develops, there's definitely a possibility there. Of course, the entire identity of this Grizzlies team is really just defense. I mean, there is defense all across the board when you look at the personnel that they do have here in Memphis. Vince Williams Jr. here, not an exception. But again, to have a 23-year-old that is a 78 overall on a beautiful contract, Something that I'm never going to be upset about. You got Zyra Williams here, only 22 years old as well. A little bit of an overall difference between the other Williams. But again, that development goes well. Maybe he'll stay in the rotation. Utah Watsonabe, probably not in my long-term plans, to be honest with you. Uh, the power forward spot. Gigi Jackson has been a very nice surprise for them this season. Uh, he's one of, if I don't think, maybe the youngest player in the NBA. But at a 79 overall already, it's absolutely fantastic. The rookie contract is great. And uh, I'm very excited about the possibilities with him. Santi Aldama, good three-point shooter, decent three-point shooter, I think what does he shoot from three i think he is yeah he's about 34 35 percent uh lamar stevens another trade from the boston celtics jake laravia here as well probably not going to do a ton with him then the center spot jaron jackson jr i would ideally like to have him at the power forward spot you know the guy's six foot ten and he's still really not an amazing rebounder as much as kind of sad as it is to say but the former defensive player of the year obviously a defensive stud one of the core building blocks here for us today brandon clark Good backup center option. So um, now just kind of comes into the rebuild. I always override LeBron's retirement. We got to kind of figure out the direction we want to go with this team because um, as I've gone over a bunch now, it's very different than a traditional offseason rebuild that we've done so far because, you know, we're rebuilding completely trash teams with some of the worst rosters in the league. A little bit different here today, and we're still going to have a top pick, potentially. Number seven overall projected right now. Where are we going to go? And it is falls to nine. Wow, that's a little unfortunate. Um, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I don't love this draft class anyways. I do like Taylor Jenkins as a head coach. He's expiring. I'll probably keep him here the entire time. Um, I don't love this draft class as a whole. The ninth overall pick. It's okay. Um, I would have liked to have been a little bit higher, but I can live with it. 
Now the only thing is going to be, what do I want to do with this draft pick? You know, is there a trade out there in the works potentially, or do we want to maybe draft a rotation piece? Because the thing is, this team is already relatively deep. You know, it's not like we're, you know, playing 70 overalls off the bench or anything like that. So um, my gut reaction is to draft somebody. I think it makes the most sense. And then that person could be in a trade maybe at some point if we stumble upon that. So, you know, what, we'll just draft somebody. I'm going to stick at nine. It's very rare I stick at nine. Typically, it's either a late first, we just draft like a rotational bench, lower end bench piece, or I draft somebody super high to hopefully be a star. So, not saying you can't get a star at number nine, obviously. How is Rizache here? That's insane. Uh, I do see Matas Buzelis here. Definitely an idea there. Isaiah Collier. We're kind of good at the point guard spot, though. We have Ja, we have Marcus. Kind of good there. Robert Dillingham, I'm pretty sure, is projected to be like a top three pick. Donovan Klingens here as well. The UConn product. Tyler Smith. I mean, there's no Zach Eady down there. I think Matas Buzelis is going to be my guy. I will change his name and make sure it's correct. A lot of the names in here are just off. It drives me absolutely effing crazy. But uh, I think I'm going to go with Buzelis. I got Riza Shea in the video the other day, so I'm going to probably pass on him today. But Collier, Dillingham, both would be very, very solid options, but there's just really not a need for a point guard. So Matas Buzelis, welcome to the team. Can obviously play a little bit of the stretch four. Can play the three as well if we need him to. Let's go ahead and trade our second round picks for some future seconds, and we are good to go there. So excited to have Buzelis here. Not exactly sure what his role is going to be with this team, but I definitely do see him getting some sort of minutes. So actually, Kennard has a team option. Those eyes, somebody's got to fix that. Uh, Watanabe accepted his player option. We'll bring back LaRavia just because there's probably a little bit of value there in a 22-year-old. Uh, Scotty Pippen Jr. is a 74 overall. I'll qualify him just because I think the overall is nice to see. Um, I just don't really see a lot of minutes there for him. But again, he's a nice piece to have. All right, we look at this free agency class. There's really no free agents here, or at least anybody we seriously care about. Um, right now, I think there is probably some sort of trade coming. I'm not exactly sure what it's going to be, but I'll obviously show you guys when I find it. We're going to talk to the Utah Jazz and see if there's maybe any level of willingness to trade me Lowry Marketing. Now, my thought process on this is Marketing is going to be my starting small forward. He's seven feet tall, Jaron Jackson Jr. I think I'm going to keep him at the center spot, have Gigi Jackson as my starting power forward. And then adding a guy like Lowry Marketing, who is seven feet tall, definitely can add another rebounding element that maybe Jaron Jackson Jr. lacks a little bit. So I'd love to pick up Marketing. would obviously just be another star in this team. We're offering up Kennard because he does regress, unfortunately. Santi Aldama because we just drafted him in Toss Buzelis and Utah Watsonabe just because we don't really need him, to be honest with you. Um, I'm not sure what the money situation is looking like. They could afford Conchar as well. My goal is to give up the least amount of draft picks possible. You want Jake LaRavia, you're more than welcome to have him. Uh, I'd like to hang on to Zyra Williams, but I really don't necessarily need to. I do think keeping him for now would kind of be smart, though. Um, and then we suck, so our first round pick next year is actually actually relatively valuable right now I'd be willing to give it up because I'd be a you know I'd be willing to bet a lot of money will be much better next season so I'll give it up they do agree to it I understand it's a hefty price to pay but we're getting a really good player here in Lowry Marketing. so um, at this point in time it's all about figuring out where we want to go with the rest of this team I'm comfortable with Jaron Jackson Jr. Brandon Clark Buzelis is going to back up GG Jackson now if Zaire Williams is here I'm wondering what happens to his overall at shooting guard it goes down three. All right, that's kind of tough for me to kind of live with. So maybe one more trade. We found ourselves a trade in a trade that I do really like. We're sending Zaire Williams over to the Charlotte Hornets for Trey Mann in a 2025 second round pick. Now, Trey Mann is three overalls higher than Williams. He's only one year older and they're both expiring contracts. So ultimately to get a guy like Trey Mann, really good three-point shooter to come off the bench as our backup shooting guard. I think this trade makes a lot of sense for us. So very excited to have Mann here, going to be the new backup behind Desmond Bain. And then we're pretty much all set moving forward. I know we maybe have like a mid-level exception to spend in free agency, but honestly, I'm going to let this team kind of Run with it. See what ends up happening. I'll see you guys at the start of year number one. Here we go for the start of our first season here with the Grizzlies. We had a pretty productive offseason. We kind of cleaned up some of the depth problems on this team. And I say problems almost in a good way because we had in a plethora of depth. And I think we improved what we had. And this team is looking very, very good. John Morant, Desmond Bain, Lowry Markin, and Gigi Jackson, and Jaron Jackson Jr. is our one through five. Again, I, I don't love the idea of playing Triple J at the center spot. But for now, especially with the potential that Gigi Jackson has, I think it makes a lot of sense. Never mind the fact we did add another seven footer here in marketing bench units really good maybe one of the better benches i've had in all of the offseason rebuild so far and it's only year one marcus smart gonna be my sixth man here trey man newly acquired my backup shooting guard behind him vince williams jr brandon clark and the matas buzelis only getting 10 minutes a night i know it's very strange on a team that you know was just top 10 in the lottery to have their lottery pick only getting 10 minutes a night but very very like unforeseen circumstances is what we have going on here so this team definitely should be good i fully expect to be in the mix here in the western conference and i'll see you guys at the end of your number one.
54 and 28. That is the regular season record for the first season here in Memphis. I am very happy with that. Obviously, last season was not great, or well, last season in Memphis, you get it. Uh, but 54 wins and a very good and a very deep Western Conference at that is something I will definitely take for year one. 27, 11, and 10, almost 28. That is the MVP numbers, and he shot 47% from three as a seven footer. Insane. Ron Holland's rookie of the year. Andre Drummond is backing up Nikola Jokic. He's your sixth man of the year. Victor Wembanyama is your deep boy. Jaden Hardy, most improved the mellow ball clutch player of the year. Nick Nurse, head coach of the Philadelphia 76ers, gets coach of the year after they win 56 games. All right, we are the two seed here in the Western Conference. We're going to be facing a playing team in round one. And if I can have my choice of the playing teams I see right there, please give me the Portland Trailblazers. Here's a look at the East. Um, let's check out the numbers. How did everybody play this season? John Morant, Desmond Bain, Larry Marketing, Jaron Jackson Jr., Gigi Jackson, Mann, Smart, Williams, Clark, and Buzelas. Rebounds per game is going to be Larry Marketing. Um, yes, yeah, so like six boards. All right, uh, and then rebounds with John Morant. Wow, nine and a half assists. You truly do love to see it. Okay, we are facing a playing team. That playing team is the Phoenix Suns. I wish it was the Trailblazers, but we get Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, and Kevin Durant in round one. Not an easy first round matchup, to say the least. We do win game one and game two. Quick 2-0 lead, always fun. They do win game three. We win four, and we get it done in five games. A bit of a surprise. I'm not going to lie to you, but I'm very happy. Nonetheless, we're taking on the Oklahoma City Thunder here. Wow, that is a fantastic addition to this team. That is absolutely, I, I mean, that's a very underrated addition. Um, all right, that one through five is very, very talented. Obviously a little bit younger, but, um, you know, they're, they're going to be a, a very tough challenge. That's kind of what I'm trying to say. We are currently up 2-1 against the Oklahoma City Thunder. They tie it at twos. We go down 3-2. And we get bounced in six. I don't think it's crazy that we lost that series. They're a very, very good young team. And, uh, wow, they go, do go on to make the finals. They end up losing to Donovan Mitchell and the Cavs in seven games. All right. It is what? Oh, well, I can't override his retirement again. But a year in Detroit, might I might be willing to let the man retire. Uh, staff retirements, cool Hall of Fame, LeBron, CP3, Jersey retirements, draft lottery. Um, I know we don't have our pick. I traded away from marketing and smartly, I would say, because of the value of that pick was never going to be higher. It is the Rockets, the Nets, the Thunder, who were just in the final of the Lakers. And you guessed it, the Thunder again. That's insane. It's, I mean, the future of the Thunder, man, it's just insane. I'm waiting for like the time. It's probably going to be this off season when Sam Presti just like cashes in a bunch of the draft picks for a disgruntled star somewhere who that player is going to be. I have no idea. Maybe Kevin Durant. Bring him back. I don't know. Just saying. Um, I would like to go ahead and get my head coach back. Where I wish it was easier. Like, right? It should be easier. Why would, like, the coach I just had not be at the top of the list right now? It makes absolutely no sense. Please tell me Taylor Jenkins accepts that. Thank you. Okay, let's head up to the draft right now. I don't think we're going to have any first-round picks this year. I just want to confirm that. We do have two seconds. This team's deep enough where two seconds isn't really going to do a lot for me. So we're going to pass over the draft this year. After drafting Buzelis last year, we have no options. Pippen Jr., who picked up his qualifying last year, I guess I'll qualify. He's a 76 overall. And then Trey Mann, certainly going to get that qualifying. Um, all right, we enter a very talented free agency class. Larry Markkinen is my number one priority right now. And I also like to extend Trey Mann. And they both end up accepting. I could hold a qualifying on Scotty, but I just, I don't really see a reason to. No, I'm going to let him go. Um, all right, so in terms of what I want to do with this team, I don't think it's an insane idea to just kind of run it back with literally everybody we have here. Um, there might be a trade that makes this team a little bit better. Unless it's like an absolutely perfect deal, I'll probably hang on to everybody. So I'll either see you guys with a blockbuster move or at the start of year number two. The rotation is all set and we are ready to go here for our second season in Memphis. If I'm being honest with you guys, I considered a couple blockbuster trades, ultimately did not decide to overpay, kind of overplay my hand, if you will, because it really didn't feel necessary. You know, we made it to round two last year before losing to a team that I probably would have considered better than us. So um, this season, I really do think that we are, you know, another year of development for everybody, a full season together again. And I really do think that this team can make some noise. So, you know, if this year doesn't go super well, maybe we'll consider one of those blockbusters that I almost made last off season, but just couldn't quite pull the trigger on. So excited for this season. Nonetheless, though, I do not want to get too ahead of myself. John Morant, Desmond Bain, Larry Markkinen, Gigi Jackson, and Jaron Jackson Jr. is your one through five. Um, if I auto set this rotation, the game actually recommends I start Matas Buzelis over Gigi Jackson. Now, I'm not going to do that because I do think Gigi Jackson has earned his starting spot. He didn't play necessarily bad or anything like that. 
last season, but just interesting to see what the game recommends. Marcus Smart will be my sixth man. You got Trey Mann behind him. Matas Buzelis is going to be getting a decent amount of minutes. He's up from 15 or 10 to 15 this season, so good to see him developing well. Vince Williams Jr. and then Brandon Clark rounding out this rotation. So uh, we bring back our exact 1 through 10 from last season. Last season didn't end super well, but I thought it was a really positive trending season. So hopefully this one goes a little better. I'll see you guys at the end of year two. 53 and 29 is the record we wrap up our second season here in Memphis with. Now it's right around where we were last year. I think it's one game worse technically. It's not terrible. I would have liked to have seen more wins than the year prior, but I can live with it. SGA is your MVP. Dylan Harper, rookie of the year. Goddamn, the Thunder just run this league. Uh, Cam Thomas is now a Chicago Bull, and he's winning six man of the year, averaging nearly 23 points a game. That's insane. Victor Wembanyama once again, your deep boy, Kyle Filipowski, the Duke product, most improved Darius Garland, clutch player of the year, 60 and 22 for the Oklahoma City Thunder. I always forget how much of a royal pain in the ass they are when I do have to face them. So we're the three seed, it's one seed lower than last year, 54 wins for Memphis, or Memphis, for New Orleans, took the two seed. The East, oh my God, that is ugly. The Hornets, the what? I don't know, man. All right, let's dive into it. Um, John Morant, Desmond Bain, Marketing, Jaron Jackson Jr., Gigi Jackson, Man, Buzela, Smart, Vince Williams. Brandon Clark, Board's going to be Marketing, and Assist is John Morant. So round one, we do have the Denver Nuggets. I'm not excited about this. Now, they don't have Jamal Murray anymore. They do have Kevin Porter Jr., I guess. And, uh, yeah, I mean, any team with Jokic is going to scare me no matter what and who is around him. So uh, we are 1-1 right now with the Denver Nuggets. They go up 2-1. They go up 3-1. We do fight back. Okay, game seven, and we lose. Yeah, um, I should have probably made a big blockbuster trade last offseason. Oh, who the fuck's on the Hornets? Really? They're just kind of running the East. Now they're in the finals. Okay. Thunder win it all. Um, I should have made probably the big trade last offseason. I just didn't want to overpay, and ultimately that kind of bit me in the ass. I'm not saying we threw away a season uh, or anything like that, but we kind of did in some aspects. So a little bit disappointing, but obviously this is the offseason where we're going to go ahead and make some uh, bigger decisions. That Orlando pick is currently projected at number 14. I don't know what the protections are on it or anything, but apparently we have the 14th overall pick now. Um, I'm still fine with the do job Taylor Jenkins is doing. He has good enough ratings, in my opinion. So he's going to stay and might be a bit of a controversial decision, but it's hard to fire a coach after two pretty good regular seasons. And it's like, it's not like we choked away anything in the playoffs. We just ran into a really good Denver Nuggets team. Um, all right, so we have two first-round picks this year, 14 and 27. We also have 6 and 19. Uh, I'm going to decide what I want to do. There's a couple different directions I can go. I could draft players and then trade them, or I could just trade the picks straight up. So um, hang with me. Because we unfortunately don't have a lot of players under contract right now, it's kind of hard to make the money work on any sort of major deal with a player making a decent amount of money. So what I decided to do is just go ahead and trade away the picks for future first round picks. Not one of the options I necessarily presented, but it's the one I think makes the most sense for us here. We're going to go ahead and make that trade. I think it was with the Clippers, and then we'll make this one here with the Hornets. So skipping over the draft entirely once again, we hit team player options, bringing everybody here back. Um, as much as I love them, I think there's a distinct possibility that Marcus Smart might end up in the category of a player that I sign and then immediately go ahead and trade. So I don't love doing this. I do like Marcus quite a bit, but I think it's going to help us in the long run and not even the long run than now because we're ready to win uh, if we go ahead and make a move like this. So uh, Smart and Jaron Jackson Jr. are back. My goal right now is to figure out somebody as a starting center who is actually a center. We're working on a deal with the Miami Heat. It's going to cost us a hefty price in order to make a trade, but Bam Adebayo would be a significant upgrade at our center position, and I'd be really excited to add him here. So how about we make the deal? They agree to it. All right. This is a trade that's going to allow me to move Jaron Jackson Jr. back to his more natural position of the power forward. We're getting a really good defensive center in Adebayo, creating an insanely scary defensive front court. And uh, that is a really good move, in my opinion. So now, our, kind of our thing we have to do is just replace this backcourt. Um, it sucks losing out on two, I guess, really good rotation pieces, but it's something we kind of got to live with right now. So... We made the decision. It, we kind of sealed our fate with the way we wanted to go. And unfortunately, everybody here is just either not very good or kind of old. So, yeah, not really loving a lot of the options here. But I guess Sam Merrill is probably going to have to do for me in terms of a backup shooting guard. And maybe, I don't even know, he signs. Um, and then my point guard options, like Dennis Smith Jr. isn't great. I'm going to actually probably do this the old-fashioned way that not a lot of people like. But you're probably going to be able to live with. So let's sign both of these guys. I think combined they're making like $4 million, $4.5 million, I think. 
So let's see what, let's just take a look at point guards making four and a half million dollars or less. It's probably not a long list. Probably just a lot of free agents, but this is the point we're at. Uh, we wanted to make an upgrade. Bam Adebayo certainly provides that for us, so I'm excited about it nonetheless. Robert Dillingham, probably not going to happen. He's probably just too young and too valuable. Uh, Miles McBride, get some deuce action here. I actually could probably live with that. It's actually a pretty good player. Um, all right, let's make a deal. Thank you very much. All right, so excited to have Deuce McBride here. Sam Merrill, maybe if I do this, like, three first round picks left. I could also just wait till the start of next season, but I want to make sure this team is as good as we can possibly be, right? You know, I don't want to go into the final season thinking that there's any weaknesses in this one through five, literally anywhere. So um, I didn't see anything there I loved. Not saying Sam Merrill is going to like crazy regress or anything. He's a good three-point shooter. But other than that, there's not a lot that gets me excited about him. So, I mean, we did make a huge upgrade here with Bam, but still maybe one more trade at the start of year number three. We're here at the start of year number three, and we're going to talk to the Denver Nuggets and see if they're maybe willing to make a trade for us. Julian Strother, I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong. Strother, Strother, I'm sorry. Uh, but he had a really good season last year as the backup shooting guard for the Denver Nuggets, and I would like him to be our backup shooting guard. I'm not saying Sam Merrill couldn't do a decent enough job, but I, oh my God, he was 43% from three. Maybe I shouldn't do this deal. No, I still want to do it. Uh, let's see. They want two seconds, and they'll give me Gabe Vincent, I guess. I just don't really see a huge need for Vincent, but nonetheless, good to have Strother here. Um, all right. I don't really think there's there's any other moves coming um when i look at kind of the landscape of this team we've certainly got better or got better and there is certainly enough here to win a championship so if we just don't get it done that's just the players choking this team is deep enough i have certainly won with worse let's set the rotation We've had back-to-back -back years of really disappointing endings to really promising season. It's been really unfortunate, but ultimately we decided it was time for yet another blockbuster trade this offseason, adding Bam Adebayo, replacing some players off the bench, and we were ready to go here for our final regular season in Memphis. I think this team is good enough. I, I know talent-wise they definitely are, just whether everything clicks or not. And then here's to hoping that it does. John Morant, Desmond Bain, Lowry Marks, and... Uh, I can't fucking speak. Lowry Market and Jaron Jackson Jr., Bam Adebayo, my one through five. Buzales is going to take over as my six man off the bench he's our highest overall the game recommends it i know traditionally i don't have like big men i know he's more of a stretch four than like a 2005 ish power forward but you get what i'm saying it'll be my sixth man vince williams jr behind him you got julian strother newly acquired here's my backup shooting guard brandon clark still locking down the backup center spot miles mcbride as my backup point guard so you know i i think this team is good enough but then again i thought last year or last two years teams were going to be even better than they were as well so i'll see you guys at the end of the final regular season now that's a little more like it. That's exactly what I've been looking for throughout the course of this entire video. Not only does John Morant win his first career MVP, but we go 68 and 14, and I'm assuming it's a pretty safe bet. That's probably the best record in the NBA. So John Morant, 22 and a half points, six boards, 12 assists a game. You truly do love to see it. And uh, really good numbers all across the board. Koa Pizza Rookie of the Year. He is a member of the Utah Jazz. Trey Young is a New York Nick, and he's winning six men of the year. Oh, God bless 2K. I mean, uh, really gotta love him. Depoy is Wemby once again. Bronny James is a Celtic. He's most improved. SGA Clutch Player of the Year. Taylor Jenkins does win his first coach of the year of this video. All right, let's dive into the standings. 68 wins. Pretty safe bet. That was going to give us the one seed. We're 14 games up on the two-seeded Rockets. Here's a look at the Eastern Conference with the Indiana Pacers are the one seed. And the numbers. John Morant won an MVP. Desmond Bain, Bam Adebayo, Larry Marketing, Jaron Jackson Jr., Buzela, Strother, Williams, Clark, and McBride. Rebound's going to be Bam, and assist is John Morant. So round one, it's going to be us and the San Antonio Spurs. Now, I don't love the idea of facing Wemby. He has a decent core around him. I still think we are definitely a better team. So here goes nothing in the first round of the Western Conference playoffs. We are currently up 3-0, and it is a clean sweep. Moving on to round two, the Golden State Warriors. Definitely getting a little bit older. They got some nice young pieces with Podjemski. Got Kuminga, Isaiah Hartenstein's a new addition. Capella here as well. Interesting. Steph Curry. Pretty decent core around him still. I mean, it's not a super team or anything like that, but it's a decent enough core. Decent enough core just to get swept. We've yet to lose a playoff game. We have a really, really good team here with the Oklahoma City Thunder in the Western Conference Finals. They have made the finals, I think, both years of this video so far, only winning in year two. I'd like to just beat the everlasting shit out of them. We do finally lose a game. We do go up 3-1, and we close them out in five. John Morant, Western Conference Finals MVP. De'Aaron Fox, now a Toronto Raptor. Grizzlies and Raptors Finals. Ryan Dunn next to De'Aaron Fox. RJ Barrett Barnes. There's no way we're losing to this team, right? I, I would hope not. No. What is happening? There's no way... Okay, there we go. That's a little bit more of what I'm talking about. Back to Memphis here for a Game 7. I cannot believe... Don't do this. 
Do not do this. There's absolutely no way, respectfully, that that team should be beating us. Never mind the fact that we're in, here in seven right now. God damn. I love coming back from being down 3-1, but respectfully, there was no way that team should have been taking us to seven. Never mind having a 3-1 lead. Holy shit. All right, man. We get it done. Um, a stressful video. A, a video that I didn't necessarily expect to be stressful. You know, it almost felt like this was, in some ways, harder than some of the other offseason rebuilds. But it, it really shouldn't have been. So, it's funny some of the curveballs 2K throws at me sometimes. But, nonetheless, I enjoyed it. I think we put together a really good team. Obviously, started out with a really good core already. And, uh... I think we put good pieces around the already built core and ultimately ended up in a championship. So I had a ton of fun with this one. As I mentioned, I've been loving doing the offseason rebuild so far. I know there's only so many teams we can do at this point. We're still waiting for a few more teams to be eliminated, but we will definitely get to all of them eventually. So I enjoyed this one. I hope you guys did as well. Of course, let me know any other video ideas down below in the comment section. But that is it for me. As always, thanks so much for watching. I love you guys. I'll catch you guys all in the next one.